Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In a previous video, I've demonstrated how to read time series from disk and interpolate them into uh, PC raster maps. In this video, we are going to do the opposite. We are going to report certain locations on the map as textual tables that we can further process in spreadsheet programs or visualize with the Agila tool. We will use the same script as last time, but we will add some lines to report the precipitation from the two interpolation methods at different locations. First we will activate the PC raster environment in the Anaconda prompt. Then we go to the folder where we have stored our results from last time. And there we see the time series maps and the Python script. And uh, let's have a look at the results again. So we have 10 time steps of the inverse distance weighing of precipitation stations and decent polygons. And here we see the results. If I click on a location and I click right on the legend, I can ask a graph. This is generated on the fly based on the map data. And I can animate it. Now in this demonstration I want these graphs as tables for three different locations that we're going to determine. Now you can uh, sample the coordinates also in Aguila. Here in the brackets it will give the coordinates. And uh, I'm going to make a text file with three different locations for which we are going to report the values. So I use the copycon command. You can also use a notepad or another text editor. And I call the new file locations.txt. It's a simple text file which has the format x space y space id. So I just take over the x and the y coordinates of the first point and add id1. Then I look up another point and I choose a third point. And use Ctrl Z to save this text file. I can close all these Aguila windows by choosing File Exit from one of the windows. Now we start Spider to edit the Python file to make it possible to report the precipitation at these three different locations. So I add a line here to initialize the time series output. Let's first do that for the IDW. So I need to define a variable. I call it self.idwtss. We use self, remember, because then I can reuse it in the dynamic section. The function to output the time series is time output time series. And you see there what it needs. First, it needs a string for the file name. So it will generate these TSS files, which are basically normal text files, as we have read also last time, but now we will write them. So I just call it IDW and then the output will be IDW.TSS. The model is self. And then I need a map with the IDs, that's locations.map, which I will create in a bit. And I want a header, so I call no header equals false. I still need to create the locations.map file. I use the call to map function, which we also used last time. Locations.text locations.map and I want it to be of the same dimensions as the clone which is our DEM and I add here minus n to make it nominal 
The three points are red and they are now on the map. Let's have a look. Locations, three locations. So that's the pre preparation of the time series output. In order to report, we need to go into the dynamic section and write the time series to the hard disk. Here we choose the variable from the initial and we add dot sample. And we add the name of the variable that we want to report at the sample. So in this case, press zip IDW. Then it will use the information from the initialization to write it to IDW.TSS. Now I'm preparing for the TSEN. So I simply copy it. Let's call the output TH. Same locations. And then also in the dynamic, I copy that line, replace with TSEN TSS and dot sample, and then press zip TSEN to report the TSEN polygon precipitation. Then I can run it. And let's have a look at the result. First, uh, directory listing. And there I can see that the two TSS files have been created idw.tss and th.tss. I can use the type command to visualize the contents of the text file and I see the header and for each point in the location.map I see the values and then for 10 time steps. With the Aguila command, I can also visualize these. So on the left, we see the three graphs for IDW for the three different points. And on the right graph, we see the ones for TSEN. If you want to do more analysis, you can, of course, import these TSS files into your spreadsheet program to further process. I hope this video was useful. Uh, if you would like to get updates, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for more free materials, go to gisopencourseware.org.